Thank you, and thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to showing you my, uh, my approach. This is a talk on a minimalist approach to stroke. Simple, fast, and effective, because as Dr. Stav said, time, time is brain, and so we want to be effective and efficient. These are my disclosures. So my evolution kind of towards simplicity, um, you can see here on this slide. Now when I train, and some of my, the people that train me are in the audience and uh, in the hall, this is how we did it on the, on the left side, right? So in 2016 and 2017, as a fellow, um, we were using these cumbersome large bore guide catheters that frequently dissected the ICA that were kind of scary to, to put up there um, to get ready for thrombectomy. And you know we nearly always used the Salumber technique, so opened up a stent retriever, had everything ready to go, and albeit effective, that's a lot of equipment. And I remember as a fellow, like dreading being on the back table having to reload if you weren't successful because everybody's waiting for you as the junior fellow, like, hey, why is it taking so long to reload my guide catheter and, and my wire and my microcatheter? And you're just, it's like a, a frenzy. And so as I got out in practice and technology advanced and the Zoom catheter became available to me, which now I call kind of like a cheat code uh, for thrombectomies, you can take a Zoom 88 and launch that thing into the cavernous segment quite easily. And so we, and then I realized, well, maybe I don't need a, a microcatheter. Maybe I don't need uh, all this extra stuff. And where I, where I initially started, I had techs helping me out that were reloading. So the less product I had in their hand, the easier it was for them. And they appreciated the, the minimalistic approach with less product. So as I comment, it's less equipment to load and reload. It's easy to prep. Um, and again, the hospital administration, you know, they love when we don't open up a stent retriever. They, they celebrate. Everyone's high-fiving in the back when you can get a, a Tiki 3 without opening up a stent retriever. Hakeem, I love that approach. Sometimes less is more, and the faster you get to the thrombus is really the best way to go. Can you show some example cases describing how are you most efficient with this approach, and what's your success rate? Right, so here's a great case example. Um, and this is a case where my residents were really worried because there was some FMD noted on the, uh, on the CTA head and neck. And they were like, are you sure you're gonna try your technique and try to take the 88 guide all the way through that disease segment? I don't know if you can see it, but in the mid cervical region, there is uh, fiber mus muscular dysplasia. And this is a, again, Oklahoma is where I practice. We have a lot of sick folks. Um, unhealthy vessels, unhealthy people. But nevertheless, the technology, again, I was a little bit apprehensive myself. This is one of my early cases. I was able to take the 88 guide past this segment here with relative ease and not have to use a lot of equipment to do it. Um, and here you can see, this is the end result. Um, with minimal product open, I'm able to take the 88 over the 71 into the M1 segment. That's, that was not possible in 2016, 2017. And so that's why I tell new fellows and new trainees, you guys have it really good. You guys don't even know how good you have it because that is certainly not what we were doing back then. And I, I, I can say that now. I feel like I can say that back then. Um, so the key is to keep things simple, make it easy for your team, um, and trust the technology. So this is another example, one that required uh, two passes, okay? So I, I, I'm not gonna tell you that it's perfect all the time, but the advantage of this minimalistic setup is that you're able to reload in rapid fashion. So rather than have your fe junior fellow or your tech panicking in the back table trying to get things reloaded, if you have your 88 guide up where it should be, the reload is, is much, much simpler. So in this picture, in this, in this footage, you can see the 88 right here in the Petrus segment. Um, and again, the, the technology is so good. You can take the 55 where I took it, which is the, the mid M1. And again, some of this, there is some gamesmanship. So I'm looking at preoperative CTAs. I'm trying to get an idea, is this a 55 case? Is this a 71 case? By trying to look at the caliber of the M1 and the M2 before I pull my product. And so this is after the first pass. You can see 
there's still some uh, occlusion at the M2 segment, but we're right there, ready to reload, no microcatheter, and back in action. So this case took 15 minutes with a second pass involved. So that's pretty good time, I would say. I think if we're talking about best practices for the minimalistic approach, and I cannot stress this enough, it's you have to use the technology to its fullest potential. So leaving a Zoom 88 guide parked in the cervical ICA and thinking that you've done something great is not going to accomplish the task. You have to get the 88 guide into the cavernous segment at least for you to fully reap the benefits and get the return on the investment that you've made. And so. Um, it took me some time to get comfortable pushing the guide catheter and kind of like I said before, you have to trust the technology. And in this case, the Zoom 88 has really impressed me in terms of how uh, easy it is to push and how it takes the curves. So then after you've taken your guide up, you need to have your 024 wire, and that's kind of what I use. You can use an 035 if you please, but 024 is what I have on the shelf, um, and use that as a rail to get the 71 or the 55 over. Then you straighten the system, and then you let the 88 ride. Hakeem, so it, it seems like imperative care is breaking the barrier and the misconception that larger catheters are tougher to navigate, they're stiffer devices. What is your advice from your expertise, tricks of the trade with the young interventionists who want to start using these catheters? Yeah, so again, like I said, I think, um, you have to select patients out first, always. Um, and again, you have to understand that you can push the catheter. It's OK to push the catheter. They're safe. Um, and you have to have a little bit of, a little bit of courage um, to be comfortable pushing the catheter distally and utilizing the rail that you've created um, to do that. And, it, and it's quite effective. So I think, I think that's the, the biggest message I can, I can send from this talk is, you know, the 88 has really changed my practice. And again, this it goes beyond stroke. I mean, when we're talking about tough flow diversion cases, tough any case, having that guide catheter and a large bore catheter distal, which you couldn't have before, um, really helps you deliver the devices or enhance the aspiration thereafter. So this is the, uh, the six French insert portfolio that um, I'm excited to try and utilize. Um, I think this is going to further strengthen and buttress the already effective tools that they have. Um, I think these are going to be game changers as well. You're, I mean, maybe not as sexy as an 88 getting up to the ophthalmic, but I think having a, having a good rail and having reliable and dependable support catheters um, are also crucial. Are there any questions, I guess, from the audience? We have a minute to spare. I have a question. How far distal have you been able to ride the 088, uh, assuming that you don't have extremely tortuous anatomy? So you can see in this, in this uh, slide, the 88 is parked in the MCA on that panel right there. And then here, like I said, in that FMD case, um, where I had people telling me, I don't think that's a good idea to take an 88 past this segment because you may cause problems. The 88's in the proximal M1. And so, and I like that question because that 88 in the M1, there, it can be sub-occlusive. And that's why I think the aspiration could sometimes be enhanced by that sub-occlusive 88 in the, in the MCA. It could really be your workhorse because you're covering carotid M1 and really distal M1 bordering proximal M2, so. Correct. Okay, thank you, Dr. Shakir, and thanks thank for you, Imperative Care.